Good evening. I'm Jim Axelrod. Funeral services will be held tomorrow for the two young women killed in the movie theater attack in Lafayette, Louisiana, last week. In Franklin, Louisiana tonight, a prayer service is being held for 21-year-old Macy Bro. Earlier today, friends and family of 33-year-old Jillian Johnson gathered at a funeral home in Lafayette. One of our reporters on the ground in Lafayette, David Begno, has exclusively obtained surveillance footage showing the gunman's final hours at a $40 a night motel. The video shows a Lincoln Town car leaving the Motel 6 in Lafayette, Louisiana. Authorities say that vehicle belonged to John Hauser, the man who opened fire inside the Grand Movie Theater. Hotel officials say John Hauser parked his Lincoln Town car right here in this stall on the back side of the hotel every night that he was here. It just so happened to be right in front of his hotel room door, number 129. The film train wreck started at 7.15 p.m. Surveillance footage shows Hauser's car leaving the motel at 641. It was only four miles to the theater. Inside the room, it is a mess. Bottles of alcohol, clothes all over, and the TV still on. Police say they found a wig and glasses here they believe Hauser used as a disguise. Michael Edmondson is the Louisiana State Police Superintendent. We know him to have been in other movie theaters across South Louisiana, probably Lake Charles here in Lafayette and Baton Rouge, in a disguise and a wig in, in Baton Rouge because somebody said we saw him and we felt so uncomfortable he, we left. The 59-year-old drifter made a $100 deposit when he checked into the motel on July 3rd. He paid $286 a week for a room. Surveillance video shows his final days walking through hallways, down the side of the building, even smiling as he stopped by the check-in desk. The owner says Hauser was polite and unremarkable. He was never threatening. Nothing like that. Rude. No, nope, nothing at all. Problematic. Nope. He just he mind his own business. He mind his own business. He did you know, what he had to do. You know, and that's basically it. Is. Investigators will re-enter the movie theater tomorrow. The crime scene is still marked with purses, popcorn, and blood. More than 100 witnesses have already been interviewed. Nicole Zamet Fusilier is one of them. She saw the gunman reloading. Ten rounds went off when I realized, you know, sixth or seventh round, I, I drop and I'm looking at him and I'm like, because I know guns, I said, he's reloading. So I scream to everybody, he's reloading, get the hell out of here now. Nicole says the gunman never said a word and walked casually as he shot randomly. The mother of three has had time to reflect on just how close she came to being a victim. I was sitting there. So had I not been back, the way he was aiming, my head, my neck, my heart were exposed to him. So statistically, I shouldn't be sitting here. I'm here today by the grace of God. Nicole says her greatest fear was that the gunman was going to follow hers and her and others into the lobby, which at that time was packed with children. Instead, police say the gunman went for an emergency exit, saw a police officer, and then decided to take his own life. Jim. David, thank you.